years and we knew nothing about beekeeping before we got into it and through the help of a lot of friends and, and contacts that we've made along the way we've learned beekeeping you can do very easily in your backyard um, and hopefully as we were talking earlier if bylaws change in certain cities like Vancouver then more people can have one or two hives in their backyard because it is a really fun hobby for people. There's a number of places, other beekeepers primarily, that you can contact to get um, bees and if you need all of the equipment, the boxes and the frames and everything then um, you can purchase everything as one hive with bees, and not necessarily in it, usually they come in a little cardboard box with screen on both sides and the queen will be either separate or inside that in a little cage and uh, you purchase the bees and the equipment and then you just put them out on the f in the field and dump the bees and the queen inside the hive. Um, so that's early in the year in Fernie in this area, the Cranbrook, this region, April works, end of April works quite well. Uh, every, the queen will continue laying all summer long, so you have a constant buildup of bees. So when you buy your initial package of bees, they weigh it. It's usually one kilogram, four pounds, something like that, of bees, and then the queen. A comb that, oh, there's the queen. Right there. Beautiful. You see how long her abdomen is? And she's obviously running away from us, trying to find a place to hide. <laughs> but mm -hmm. she'll also be going about her duties and checking to see if there's larva and where an empty egg cell is. The hive will keep reproducing, and there may be 30 to 50,000 bees in a hive in the height of summer in July. All bringing in, either working in the hive to feed the other bees that are newly emerging, or bringing in honey. And uh, so mid-June to mid-July in this region is the main honey flow. So right now it's early June. We're a couple of weeks late compared to other years, but our dandelions are just finished, our apple trees are just about finished, and all the other blossoms are just about finished. And all of that food is usually just to keep the hive alive. It's not, uh, it, it's not necessarily going into honey production. Some farmers try and manipulate their hives so that they can get early f honey, especially because they'll want to sell apple blossom honey and things like that. Mm -hmm. We have a few very strong hives, and they're already bringing in honey. Um, but for the most part, our hives aren't ready to bring in honey until mid-June. There's a piece of plywood on the bottom of the hive that the bees will enter through the bottom and then they'll crawl into a, a wooden box and there's two of those wooden boxes stacked on top of each other. In the winter time or early in the spring we may only have one wooden box for the bees to live in. Um, it just keeps it warmer, keeps the queen laying in one concentrated area and then we'll set a second box on top for the bees to live in and then the honey supers or the boxes for the honey will sit on top of there um, and we can have two three five honey supers on top of uh, of the two brood boxes which the bees live in ideally you'd like to have five on top of everyone but it just depends on the year and at any time you could take one frame out of those honey supers um, and if it's totally sealed with honey you can extract just one at a time or you can make up um, several frames uh, by just taking one out of each hive and that's how we'll get early season honey and hopefully early July, mid-July we'll be able to get one frame out of one hive and another hive and combine until we have enough that we can extract some earlier on in the year. Every couple of weeks you need to open the hive and pull the frames out but you'll inspect each frame in the hive and you'll see if you can find any diseases or how much honey and pollen the bees have brought in and then as the population builds in the in the bottom two boxes of the hive then you put a queen excluder on it's a wire mesh to keep the queen from laying where in the frames that you want the honey in and then you put a box that's a very similar box on top with these picture frames in it and uh, 
the bees will lay egg. Uh, sorry, won't the queen won't lay eggs in those, but the bees will put honey in there, and then um, mid June, mid July is where the main honey flow is, and then we keep the um, honey supers or those boxes for honey on the hive through August, and the uh, bees will cap and seal all of the honey once they dry it to the, to the right water content, and then in September we'll extract the honey and we use a large centrifuge uh, basically a washing machine style spin cycle and uh, we uncap the wax off of the bees uh, off of the comb and then we spin it in the centrifuge and the uh, warm honey will fly out and into the uh, stainless steel extractor mm -hmm. and then there's a tap on the bottom we take it off filter it and uh, bottle it mm -hmm. It's very little work in the winter time. Um, now we had last talked about how much honey I take off or taking the honey from the bees in the fall. Um, then what we have to do is add or give them sugar water. It's just to fill up their, res their stores of food. Because we take the honey off, if they feel that they have an abundance of honey and, and things like that, the bees won't use much of the sugar water in September, October. Unfortunately, if cold weather sets in early, they may not use it because of the cold weather, and through the winter they may become very low on their, on their honey stores. The price of sugar is cheaper than the price of honey, so it's easier to mix up sugar water, sell a bit more of your honey, but you always want to be careful that you leave enough honey in the hive and then add to it with sugar water so that you keep your bees in the best health. Within the regional district of the East Kootenai you can easily keep bees in, in your yard and many cities are changing their bylaws so that you can have beekeeping and other uh, light agriculture like chickens or something in your backyard. They don't want to sting and they will bump you especially on the head to try and drive you away commonly before they sting, um, especially the honeybee. And many people confuse wasps and bees and hornets and bees, and they're totally different. The honeybee is a very gentle little insect. Bees get a bad rap because people think of wasps as opposed to the bee. Um, but keep getting back to keeping them in your backyard, uh, we have two in our backyard, and uh, we asked our closest neighbors if they would mind and they're very transportable so you can move them out onto a farmer's field or something like that if your neighbors are ever provoked. Organic beekeeping is a totally different subject because to try and do things organically and actually call your honey organic bees can fly for five kilometers quite easily so you would need to encompass the beehives with organic farms that are a um, radius of about five kilometers or a little less. Urban hives are excellent for the main reason that most people have flowering fruit trees in their backyard, even ornamental trees. Uh, many people will have gardens with great flowers and flower beds. So the amount of honey that you can get from an urban environment sometimes rivals the best beekeeping areas because you have a better bloom period uh, because of the ornamental flowers and gardens.